Hey, welcome guys. This is going to be doing a review of the Samsung Galaxy S9, as well as answering some of the questions of what's changed between this and the Galaxy S8. So over on the bottom, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a USB-C port, the microphone, and the first of two speakers. And the second speaker is actually the earpiece that you use when making a phone call. So to give you guys a sound sample, I've actually placed it on max volume, about five feet away from the camera. So let's take a listen to what it sounds like. So yes, as you can tell, this is definitely the loudest Galaxy S device to date, which is fantastic. And at max volume, it sounds just slightly muffled, but not too bad. So yes, it's definitely louder than the Galaxy S8, but it looks almost identical to it. But that's not really a bad thing because the Galaxy S8 and the Galaxy S9 are some of the most attractive devices you can find on the market. It's very comfortably in the hand and is a pleasure to use, especially that near bezel-less screen. I'm glad they didn't fall for the whole iPhone 10 notch nonsense on the screen like some other Android manufacturers have. And not forgetting that this is a cell phone, the reception it receives compared to some other Android devices and all iPhones is definitely better and call quality is great. So once again, it's great that it's a really loud device, but ironically, the vibration intensity is almost non-existent, which is really weird. You see, when you adjust the vibration intensity in the options menu, it vibrates a lot. Like you actually really feel it nicely. But when I leave it on max and I get a text message in my pocket, it's almost non-existent. For some reason, the vibration intensity that you adjust in the settings menu doesn't seem to match real world usage. So I tend to miss a lot of text messages. And this is the same problem as the Galaxy S8, unfortunately. It's pretty annoying that when I'm trying to take the cell phone out of my pocket, I'll accidentally press and hold the Bixby button, activating it for it to listen. This is incredibly annoying and I have no idea why Samsung placed that button in such an odd spot. Since it's an AI assistant, shouldn't Samsung have it listening all the time out of the box so that button wouldn't be necessary? It's kind of weird, but I guess we're spoiled to Google Assistant, which is fantastic. All in all, Bixby isn't that great. I don't really find it useful. My recommendation is just disable that button from doing absolutely nothing at all. Over the top of the device is where the tray is for the SIM card, as well as the micro SD card slot. Now, depending on which region you buy the phone from, the micro SD card slot can actually be substituted for a secondary SIM card tray instead. So you can have dual SIM capability. So the Galaxy S8 had the fingerprint reader next to the camera, so you tend to smudge it often. This time Samsung fixed it by placing it below, which works just nicely. And in its position is now the heart rate sensor, which also is used to measure your blood pressure. Yep, you heard me correctly. Samsung was able to do that in a cell phone as part of the S Health app suite. So Samsung took the Note 7 iris scanner as well as the Android face unlock from over five years ago and allowed you to use them both in the Galaxy S9. Now you can use them both at the same time, which is something they call intelligence scan. So if one feature can't unlock it due to bad lighting, the other one will try to take over and do it. Or you can use them one on its own over the other. You can also use the fingerprint scanner. Yep, and it's instant unlock. Like this thing is lightning fast. So you can use all three to help unlock your phone or just use one or the other. So the 12 megapixel camera is fantastic. The camera app itself is pretty easy to use and there's a lot of features built into here, including something that is really unique, which is allowing you to adjust the aperture from f1.5 to 2.4. Yep, that's right, you heard me correctly. You can do that on the fly in pro setting or of course auto settings will just do it for you. From a flagship Samsung device, it should be no surprise that pictures in good lighting conditions look amazing. And you can get some pretty nice crisp detail. The colors are a bit saturated, but they do look colorful and vibrant. Thanks to that dual aperture mode, you can get some great low light shots. This is probably one of the best in a smartphone available right now. One thing a lot of people don't mention is that this cell phone can record at 4K at 60 frames a second, making video recorded content incredibly smooth and better to stretch out for slow motion. So what you guys are seeing is 4K sample, but it's in 30 frames a second because the rest of this video is. You can download this video. I'll put a link in the video description. There's also a super slow motion mode, but it's a bit difficult to use because the fast moving content has to be aligned with a certain box. There's also the option to use Bixby as an AI filtering. So for example, if I were to scan this banana, I'll try to give me more details about it, but it's not accurate. For some reason, as you just saw, it's all about nails and ignore the banana itself. And when it does try to scan food objects, for example, it's just okay. It doesn't work that great. Another great example of the poor performance of Bixby AI is trying to scan the ever popular Dell logo. It has no idea what it is though. So it's best to kind of avoid using this feature. Over on the front side, we have a eight megapixel camera, which can record in 2K recording. It has some pretty unique features. Again, it uses Bixby AI to allow you to create your own augmented reality emoji, if you will. It 
kind of works okay. I like the idea, which is kind of taken from the iPhone 10, I feel, but it's kind of gimmicky at best, and it doesn't seem to really recognize some of the facial expressions, and it doesn't really look like me. Although for some people I have seen, it looks identical to them. There are some other features like Snapchat filtering stickers, more gimmicky features if anything, but still fun to play around with. One of the more unique Samsung features, of course, is Panorama Selfie, which allows you to take a large group selfie shot, which is kind of a neat feature. And I just wanted to put it out there because it's kind of rare to find in a phone, but the LED notification light is still present, and I'm really pleased that Samsung didn't remove this. And it should come as a surprise that the 5.8 inch screen is one of the best available on any smartphone. It's a super amyloid display of the resolution of 1440 by 2960, and it has great viewing angles, great color pop, and just exactly what you would want from a screen, also protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. The unit comes in three different choices, with the internal storage options of 64, 128, or 256 gigs, as well as expandable storage with the microSD card slot, which I previously mentioned. Out of the box, you're getting Android 8.0 Aureo with Samsung skin overlay, which they call Samsung Experience. Now, for the most part, it's okay. I'm just not a fan of how some of the apps are grouped in folders in the apps menu, making it kind of hard to find some of the Google and Samsung apps. It's kind of a mess. I'm also not a fan of how they kind of push Bixby on you, even though it's not a great AI. You also have the ability to use some of the side swiping apps because of the curved glass, the special edge screen shortcuts, which is great. You can install themes. It's also dust and water resistant up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. It's actually pretty cool that when the device is wet, there's a sensor in the charging port telling you, hey, the charging port is wet. Do not connect your charging connector. Out of the box, there are two flavors to this device in terms of the processor and GPU. Depending on which region you live in, you'll get one of those two options. And both of them are octa-core processors. Let me just say this one thing. Both are incredibly overkill for what you're gonna do day to day. It's really difficult to push them to their max because its general performance is lightning fast. It's just really snappy, it just looks great. Thanks to its strong GPU, there's not many Android video games or videos that will make it struggle. There's also four gigs of RAM available in either model, but I find this to be a bad thing. It's too much RAM. It's completely overkill, the amount of apps you can have readily available for multitasking. It just means a lot more batteries being drained. To be honest, two gigs of RAM is more than enough. And even if it had two gigs of RAM, multitasking window would still perform pretty well as it did in older Samsung devices. It's still lightning fast like always. What does all this mean for the 3000 milliamp battery built inside? Well, nothing special. It performs pretty much exactly the same as the Galaxy S8. I average about a day performance, that's with about two hours of screen on usage, Wi-Fi, GPS, speakers being used. So kind of an average usage you would get throughout a day. In terms of fast recharge speed from an almost completely depleted battery, it takes about an hour and a half, which is really fast. And for connectivity, we have GPS, Wi-Fi, which supports 802.11 A, B, G, N, and AC. LTE, Bluetooth 5.0, NFC, and of course wireless charging. Fast wireless charging at that. So some people will argue that this is not a worthy upgrade to the Galaxy S8, that there's hardly any changes made. I could argue the same thing about almost every single iPhone ever made. Hardly any changes there. I review this device as a standalone device. And for the most part, it's great. It's Samsung's best device to date, but there has some weird flaws. I can't feel the vibration when I'm getting a text message in my pocket, for example. Bixby is being forced upon me, but it's not that good of an AI. All in all, it's a great effort by Samsung. It's the best Galaxy device to date, if not one of the best cell phones ever made to this date. So definitely worth checking out. Hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to check out my social links in the video description, as well as subscribing and hitting that like button. It does help. And thanks for watching.